I think we're done. What's that? All right, guys. Welcome, everybody. My name is Cindy. For those of you that don't know me, my lovely assistant is Susan. And so, especially for those of you that are new here, this is a 65-minute deep stretch. We do lots of different types of poses, and we hold them for extended periods of time to kind of get into the deeper fascia in the body. And so I'm going to do two things. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to pass around some essential oil. I'm going to start down here. And if you would like some of this, it's called peace. You can rub it in your hand and then pass it on down the line. I'm too lazy to rub it in everybody's hand tonight. <laughs> it's not really true. It's just easier to let you pass it while I get while I get situated. So rub it in your hand, bring it up to your nose, and inhale it. And then if you would, maybe just rub a little bit on your throat. Yeah, so peace. It's got ylang ylang, vebiter, frankincense. It's kind of an interesting smell, and there's a reason for my using it. Um, and I'll get to that as we move on. Ah, Linda had a double dip there. I saw that. I saw that. It's like double dip in the chips. <laughs> um, so in addition to that, everybody has a little chip. looks like this. Um, most of them are on your bolsters. And so these chips are consent chips for touch. The front of it is colored. That means, yes, it's okay to do hands-on assists. The back of it is whitish, clearish, and that's no thank you. And so if you would just make sure that you put that chip someplace where Susan can see it, because as we move through the practice, she'll be coming around and doing some hands-on assists, including Reiki, um, as we move through this practice. And so Susan, do you want to tell them a little bit about Reiki? I'm um, sure. If you're not familiar with Reiki or have never received a Reiki treatment, Reiki is a Japanese word that simply means life force energy. And so as a practitioner, all I'm doing is allowing myself to be the conduit for the energy to flow through me. So when I place my hands on you, I'm not doing anything other than allowing the energy to flow through me onto you. So I, I place my hands on you just depending on where you are in the pose at the time. Yeah. Um, but Reiki goes where Reiki can go, so Reiki finds where it's needed in your body. So yeah, if you'd like to receive the Reiki, just use your chip color for Sunday. Yep. Susan also teaches here on Wednesday night. She teaches a restorative. At, is it at 7:30? 7:30. Yep, so at 7:30, um, and she'll be doing Reiki during that class too. Um, it'll probably be a little bit of a smaller class, at least to start with, and then it'll probably gain in size. So if it's something you're interested in, you're more than welcome to try that class out too. And with that, I'm going to show you how we're going to get started today. Sharon, can you be my my guinea sure. pig? Okay. So I would like for you to have your blanket towards the back of the mat. The block is going to go a little bit further in front of the mat so that it can sit right underneath your rib cage, and then your head can relax down onto the blanket. And we'll come around and make sure that you get situated, that everybody kind of gets into a good space. Sometimes it takes a little wiggling around. Yeah, you want it right about. Go ahead and lay back. I'm going to move it up a little bit. There you go. You want it right about where the bra strap is for the ladies. For the gentlemen, you're going to have to guess. Feel okay? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I know some of you guys have done this before. And it might take a single fold of the blanket, or sometimes you want to... I'm going to move this a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now. No. no? All right, try that. Yeah, if, let's do this. I'll tell you what. Can you sit up for a second? Can you sit up? Let's do this. How's that? And then we put block under his arm. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> so you can hear when they get into it, right? Because it's that's good. That's good. Okay, perfect. So allow your arms to come out to the side someplace. Palms up if that's comfortable for you. Yeah. So we're using this to start to open up through the chest to begin with. It's a heart opener. But in reality, our goal is to get into the throat. And so you'll notice as you're kind of laying here, the head is tilting back. So the throat is nice and open. Sometimes this can feel a little bit vulnerable. 
And so even though you're here with your eyes closed, kind of in this very open space, Susan and I are both here with our eyes open, the door's locked, right? So feel comfortable and confident that this is a safe place to allow yourself to release and completely let go here. Our focus tonight, and as it has been for the whole week, is on our throat chakra, which is why we're starting in this shape with this nice open throat. And the throat chakra is one where it governs our speech. It governs our sounds, creativity, communication, kind of all of those things kind of come together into this throat chakra. Communication, both speaking and listening, the kind of back and forth relationship. And so that oil that we used, that piece, the purpose of it is to enable that throat chakra, to open it, to enable that you speak your piece. And sometimes we get little blockages in this area, right, and we can't quite speak what we'd like to speak. And so the goal of this practice is to help open that throat chakra, to help open yourself up to better communication and better speech. I'm going to read a little bit from my favorite book, Wheels of Life, about the throat chakra. And I'm going to read this portion that talks about the gateway to consciousness, And if you've been in my classes this week, you may have already heard this particular piece, but not always a bad thing to have repetition just to kind of reinforce it. This says, sound and rhythm and vibration, words, powerful rulers of our lives. Often we take these things for granted, using them, responding to them, creating them anew each day. We are the subjects of rhythm upon rhythm, endlessly interweaving the fabric of experience. From the first cry of a newborn child to the harmonies of a symphony, we are immersed in an infinite web of communication. Communication is the connecting principle that makes life possible. From the DNA encoded messages of living cells to the spoken or written word, from the nerve impulses connecting mind and body to the broadcast waves connecting continent to continent. Communication is the coordinating principle of all life. It is the means whereby consciousness extends itself from one place to another. And as we climb to this place, this fifth level, the chakra in the throat, We're taking yet another step away from the physical. Communication is our first level of physical transcendence in that it enables us to transcend the ordinary limitations of the body. The lower chakras are highly individual. Our bodies, for example, are clearly separate with our edges defined. But as we climb higher in this chakra column, our boundaries become less defined. When we eventually reach pure consciousness, that ideal of the seventh chakra, it will become impossible to draw a border around it. This communication is an act of connection. It is one of the uniting principle of all the upper chakras. Communication is a way of extending ourselves beyond our ordinary limitations. Through communication, information contained in your brain that is not of your brain becomes accessible. And so allow yourself to envision a blue energy right there in the throat. An energy that swirls gently and bring your breath there. As you inhale and as you exhale, allow yourself to breathe directly into that throat chakra. Breathing in time and space and energy. 
and breathing out that communication, that sense of speech. Allowing the breath to drive you for these next few moments, allowing the sensations of opening, not just through the throat, but through the chest, all the way down to that root of the body at the base of the spine to be your focal point. And then from that point, all you need to do is simply breathe a little bit and then eventually allow that breath to be a little deeper and a little stronger. If distractions begin to come in, acknowledge the distractions and let them just gently float away. Bringing yourself each and every time right back to the breath. Right back to the energy that the threat breath brings in the throat. We'll spend just about another minute here. And for most yogis, that's someplace between 14 and 18 breaths in total. Maybe a little more for you, maybe a little less for you. Now, eventually, as you're ready, begin to bring awareness back just one little bit at a time. Wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, circle the ankles, and circle the wrists. Maybe taking a full body stretch, reaching the arms behind you, pointing the toes forward, whatever feels good. And then eventually, very slowly, roll your way off of those props and come on to one side or the other. Just find a fetal position there. Allowing yourself to have a couple beats here to begin that process of reconnecting. Letting the breath continue to flow, feeling that sense of openness through the front part of the body. And then when you're called to do so, make your way up into a seated position on your mat, just sitting with legs crossed, sitting up nice and tall. Giving yourself a couple of breaths to reacquaint with this position, maybe shifting the bottom around. We're going to be in the seated position for a little bit. We're going to do some neck work and some breath work. And so if you like to have a blanket underneath your hips or a block to elevate the hips a little bit, feel free to add that. Otherwise, allow the eyes to close, lengthen the spine up, lengthen the crown of the head up, and then allow the shoulders to roll all the way down and back. Let's take a few breaths to just add a little bit more to that. As you inhale, squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears. 
And then exhale, roll the shoulders all the way down and back. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up. Exhale, roll them down and back. Last one, inhale, squeeze. Exhale, roll all the way down and back. Keep those shoulders just like that. Palms of the hands on the thighs somewhere, close to the knees maybe, if that feels comfortable. Take a deep breath in, reach the crown of the head up towards the ceiling, and as you exhale, allow your right ear to travel over towards your right shoulder. And then just pause here. Since into this left side of the neck, this throat chakra, goes all the way through the neck, front and back and both sides. And we're going to get a little bit into all of those spaces. We've opened through the front. We'll work on each side now and into the back. As you start to grow more comfortable here, the right hand can come down to the floor mat to make a little bit more space here between the ear and the shoulder. You have a couple more options from here to take this even deeper if you'd like to have it deeper. The left hand can walk out to the side or even reach out to the side, kind of making a nice diagonal line from the tips of the fingers all the way to the crown of the head. You also have the option to reach this right hand up and place the hand just right above the ear on the head. That'll give you a little bit more depth, a little bit more heaviness to this stretch. You don't want to pull, you don't want to yank here. You're simply letting the weight of this hand and arm add a little bit to the stretch. Whatever you've found, we're going to hang here with it for about a minute. So slow the breath down. Maybe the eyes close if they're not already closed. That slow, easy breath in and that slow, easy breath out. And for those of you that aren't aware of this, I do, when I offer breath counts or if I offer a time count, I always track that. So I'm watching the time for you. You don't have to do anything but be right here and be present. Breathing slow and smooth and deep and free. Sometimes as you stay in these postures for extended periods of time, that's when the mind starts to kind of wander away. And so when the mind wanders and you kind of catch it, bring it back to the breath, bring it back to being present here in this room. As we move through practice, I'll eventually begin to offer some affirmations aligned to this throat chakra that you can also use as you breathe, kind of saying to yourself as you breathe in and breathe out. Three more breaths here. Final inhale, open your mouth, exhale. Signal that we're ready to transition. Allow the hands to come back down to the thighs and then very slowly start to rotate the chin down towards the collarbone. So the gaze goes down towards your thigh, the nose is pointing down towards your thigh. That stretch moves from the side of the neck a little bit into kind of this back side of the neck, starting to get towards the back of the neck. And you may adjust the angle of your chin so the chin might come a little bit closer to the armpit or it might even tilt up a little bit as you feel those muscles in the back part of the neck start to respond, finding the place that feels sustainable. You take a breath in. And as you exhale, you let the head relax and get totally and completely heavy. And we have one minute here.
five more breaths. Last breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Nice and slow, start to roll that ear back to the shoulder. Breathe in. And then exhale, allow the chin to roll back down to the collarbone. Breathe out. Start to move with your breath here, just back and forth. Nice and easy, moving through that little arc of the side of the neck. And maybe you find a muscle here or a little knot or a little kernel of some place that you'd like to stay and just kind of lean into it. Just continue to breathe as you do that or continue to move your choice. Or you can move and then stay and then move and then stay. We'll continue to breathe for six or seven more breaths. So you choose exactly how you want to progress through it. Last breath in. Last breath out. Use your inhale very slowly. Bring your ear back to your shoulder and then bring the head up right. Bring the hands to the thighs again and just relax the shoulders, relax the neck, relax your jaw. And just notice what you feel in that whole left side of the neck for a few breaths. Oftentimes in these classes, I will bring in breath work, pranayama, at the beginning of class. But tonight, instead of doing that, I'm going to kind of intermix three different types of pranayama breath work throughout the class. And we won't spend a whole lot of time on them, but they're certainly something that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. Um, this first one is called Bee Breath, and it's great for anxiety to kind of calm you down because one thing that it does is it naturally extends your exhale without a whole lot of extra effort on your part. And so it goes like this. I'll show you and then I'll bring you guys into it. Bring the lips together. You're going to take a deep, strong inhale through the nose. And then as you exhale, you're going to make a mmm sound. Yeah, like a B, right? And so it's a little hard for me to do it and cue the breath at the same time, but I'll do the best that I can. So exhale completely. Inhale, firmly fill up all the way. With the lips closed, B breath. Exhale. Wow, pause. Inhale, fill up. Exhale. Pause. Inhale, fill up. Exhale. And pause for a minute, just take a couple normal breaths, just easy in and out. This deep breath stimulates the vocal cords and stimulates the throat. That humming sound gives that stimulation through the throat chakra, which is why I chose it for this particular practice. And But again, reminder that it is also calming if you have anxiety or if you have high tension. It's a way to really extend that breath 
And so I don't know if you guys noticed it, but I could really see an extension of your exhale as you were exhaling out. So let's do three or four more. Exhale completely. Strong breath in, fill up. Exhale. Resume your normal breath for a couple moments. Notice that maybe you still have a little bit of a vibration. Maybe you kind of feel it in your throat and down into the base of the spine, up into the crown of the head. I'm mic'd up tonight, so I can't wait to hear how that sounds on the tape when I played it back. All right, when you're ready, we're going to switch sides. So first, switch the cross of your legs. Whichever way you've got the legs crossed, do it the opposite way. It feels weird, I know, but it's good to kind of change things up a little bit. Reseat the sits bones, re-lengthen the spine, reach the crown of the head up towards the ceiling so you get all of that space through the spine. Take a breath in, and then exhale, left ear comes to the left shoulder. Now I say this a lot, that I always think of this right side as being more sensitive. Um, and it might just be for me because I'm right dominant, but a lot of people do a lot of things with their right hand. And so let this just kind of work itself into wherever it needs to be. Don't try to force it to be the same as the other side. Just let the heaviness kind of do its thing. And you can eventually drop that left hand down, letting the fingertips come to the ground. Maybe the right fingertips reach out to the side or reach all the way over to the side so you find that length from the fingertips to the crown of the head. Or you can even take that left hand up and over and do that, adding a little bit of heaviness to the stretch. I'm just not trying to force it. Once you find that sustainable place where you want to stay, we'll give it about another a minute or so here. Eyes closed, if that's comfortable, full breath in and full breath out. And just taking it one breath at a time, not rushing to try to get to the end, staying right here in the present. Breathing in and breathing out. Just about five more breaths here. Thank you. 
Final breath, breathe in. Open mouth, exhale. Bring the hands back down to the thighs or maybe down beside you and then very slowly let the chin rotate down to the collarbone. Finding that place where the chin hangs heavy, the gaze or the nose is pointing down towards the thigh. And then maybe negotiate around with the chin a little bit, getting a little closer to the armpit or a little further up towards the ceiling. Finding that perfect place to land so you get sensation in that side part of the back of the neck. And then we take that minute of breathing in and breathing out. Slow and smooth. Even and free. And just know that you are in complete and total control of this practice. So if at some point there's a posture that's just not working for you, then move yourself around and find something that does or come out of the posture completely. If you're feeling pain or if you're not able to breathe that slowly and smoothly that I keep telling you about, then that's an indication that maybe you just aren't in exactly a good place. You want to bring yourself out. Five more breaths. Last breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Slow and steady, start to make that movement. The inhale draws the ear back to the shoulder. The exhale rolls the chin down to the collarbone. Move through that little trajectory back and forth with your breath and maybe you find a little nugget that feels like it needs something extra, a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra attention. Maybe you stay there, you just breathe into that space. Slow and steady. Five or six more breaths. Last breath in, last breath out. Now nice and slow, bring that ear to the shoulder and then inhale, bring yourself back up right, head over heart, shoulders over hips. Maybe you reset those sits bones, re-lengthen the spine or move the shoulders a little bit. We're gonna move into another pranayama option here, breath work. And this one is called lion's breath. So I know at least some of you have done this before because I was with you this week. Um, and we're going to do the same thing. We'll do a set of four. We'll take a break. We'll do a set of four. This one works like this. The breath, uh, the lips are closed. That nice deep inhale through the nose. And then as you exhale, you open your mouth wide and stick your tongue out and say, ah, lion's breath, right? All right. Exhale completely. Inhale, lips together, breathe in, open mouth, nice, inhale, fill up, open mouth, inhale, fill up, open mouth, this is number four, inhale, fill up, open mouth, 
and then pause with your normal breath for just a few breaths. Notice what you feel. Maybe you might feel a little bit kind of lightheaded. Maybe you feel that kind of strong connection to the back of the throat where that ha sound is coming from. Maybe you feel it a little bit deeper like in your gut or in your heart or maybe you're like meh, whatever. All right, let's do four more rounds. Exhale completely. Breathe in through the nose. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. This time, really stick your tongue out. Inhale. Beautiful, normal breath. Just a couple of breaths. Kind of clear the palate. Clear whatever sensations have started to build up. Didn't know you were going to be sticking your tongue out in practice today, did you? All right, when you're ready, we're going to move into our next set of shapes. It's a two-sided shape. So let's start with your right knee stacking on your left knee. So the thigh is going to kind of cross over. The knees are going to stack and the feet are going to come towards opposite hips. Now, you may not be stacked perfectly here. In fact, you might be all the way out like this. You might need a block or a blanket to kind of fill in some of the space. So just feel into a place where you're starting to feel sensation into this right hip. The glued a little bit into the hip and into the top of the thigh. And then sit your sits bones down so they feel just about equally pressed into the mat or the, or the prop or whatever you've got under you. A little bit of pressure of the feet down and back towards the hips. Not a whole lot. It's just a nudge. And then we're going to wrap the arms. So this time take your right arm underneath your left arm and take the palms to opposite shoulders. I like this particular version because you can take the hands and kind of pull the shoulders forward a little bit and spread those shoulder blades apart behind you. Bring the elbows up towards your chin and then send your forehead forwards forward so that your forehead rests in the crook of your arm. You're starting to kind of open up this back part of the throat, and the back part of the neck. Now, once you get all of that accomplished, start to fold yourself forward and maybe this bottom elbow will rest on this top knee. And if not, you can always add a block or something right there to kind of give you something to rest on. And so play around with the shapes a little bit until you find a place that's sustainable. And by sustainable, I mean you can stay there for, let's say, about two and a half minutes. Deep stretch means long periods of time in these shapes, right? So add anything you need to add. And if you need something that you don't have, I can't really see you very well because it's dark and the sun's in my eyes, but raise a hand and wave it at me and I'll bring you something if you need it. What you need, Bonnie? <laughs> just cross, do them a cross leg shape. Yeah, just do that, that's fine. Okay, then put your legs out long and do this and fold forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. All right, breathe in. As you exhale, see if you can kind of close yourself in just a little bit more. Think about compressing through that neck area, stimulating the thyroid, opening through that whole back of the neck. And so this back of the neck is just a nice long extension of the spine. Think about making space between each and every one of the vertebrae. And then for this shape, for this side, and then when we do the other side, I'm going to offer an affirmation. An affirmation, if you're not familiar with it, is a short positive statement, and it kind of talks about a future tense or an expectation. This affirmation I'm going to offer on this side is, I am comfortable in silence. I am comfortable in silence. And so you might repeat this affirmation to yourself. You may even 
say it in tune with your breath. Inhale, I am comfortable. Exhale, in silence. Or maybe you just feel the intention around it. You don't necessarily say the words. Or maybe it simply doesn't resonate with you at all and you skip it all together and you just breathe. Allow the practice to be what you want and what you need for it to be. Noticing the sensations that start to come up. And maybe if you're repeating that affirmation, the sensations are in the belly or the heart or even in the mind. But maybe there's physical sensations in that hip, through the low back as you stretch into this kind of carried forward shape, lengthening from the base of the skull all the way down to the base of the spine. I am comfortable in silence. So this is a pretty kind of closed in shape where you're kind of closing down that voice box in the front. And oftentimes we think about communication as being all talking, right? We think about it as just our ability to talk and get our point across. But sometimes the silence, the ability to be silent is just as important as the ability to talk and to speak our truth. Keep breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. You're about halfway through. I think Susan's made her way a little bit more than halfway through the class. Ten more breaths here. You can repeat that affirmation, I am comfortable in silence. You can just focus on your breath. You can even say to yourself as you breathe in, inhale. And as you breathe out, exhale. Two more breaths. Last inhale. Very gentle exhale through the mouth. And then slowly start to come up right. So think about rolling up the vertebra in the neck one vertebra at a time until the head is over the heart and the shoulders are over the hips. Release the arms. And then release the legs, bring the soles of the feet to the mat and bend the knees. Plant your hands behind you. I call this your beach shape, beach body shape. 
but you're going to press the heart up a little bit, open the throat up, let your head hang back if that's comfortable, and maybe even windshield wiper the knees from side to side a little bit to release some of that heat in the hip. And if that particular shape or movement doesn't feel good to you, find something else that does. You're welcome to move in any way that feels good to you. We're simply taking this as a counter pose before we move into the other side. You can even rotate your head around a little bit, move those shoulders a little bit, whatever feels good in the body. And the body has different ways that it likes to respond to these postures. So just listen to whatever it says. And then when you're ready, come on back up to your seat. We'll move to the other side. So you know where you're going, but try not to anticipate. Try to just kind of move one piece at a time. So this time your left thigh crosses over the right. The knees come to some sort of an agreement about where they want to be. The hands go to the feet. You find that little bit of pressure on the feet. And then let the hips settle down, right? So you want the hips to be just about equally situated on the mat. You're going to wrap your left arm underneath your right arm. Take the palms of the hands to the shoulders. Elbows come up close to the chin. Tuck your head in. And then bow yourself forward until maybe that bottom elbow touches on that knee or maybe you add a prop in there. And if the legs aren't in this shape, you can still add a bolster and a block there and rest your elbow on whatever you've got built up for yourself. Start to find that little bit of ease through the body. Soften the muscles through the neck, soften the muscles up the face. If you've started to bring some tension in there and then focus on that left hip, starting to build a little bit of heat over in that joint in towards the glute and the hip and the top of the thigh. Now as you soften and ease through the breath here, Begin to let the breath get a little deeper and a little longer and a little stronger. The next affirmation that I offer in this shape, I am a compassionate listener. I am a compassionate listener. And again, you might decide to repeat this to yourself, repeat it with your breath. Just simply feel the intention or let it go completely if it doesn't resonate with you. And this, again, goes to the pieces of this chakra that are around communication. Being able to listen compassionately. Being able to take in that piece of communication with compassion and kindness so that you can then vocalize that compassion and kindness as well. If the mind starts to wander, bring it gently back to the breath. As we reach that halfway point, notice where you're feeling that sensation, either from the affirmation, where you feel it subtly in the body, in the mind, in the heart, and then that same sense of physical reaction to the shape, lengthening the spine, stretching and lengthening into that left hip area. And then breathing through and around and into that throat space, front and back. 
feeling that compression through the front, that lengthening through the back. Ten more breaths. Last two breaths. Final inhale. Open mouth, easy, soft exhale. Slowly start to bring yourself up one vertebra at a time until the head is over the heart, the heart is over the hips. Unfurl the arms and then bring the soles of the feet to the mat and find that little bit of opening. Hands plant behind you. The heart lifts up. The throat opens. Knees, windshield wiper side to side or any other movement that feels good. And as we start to make our way towards the end of class, Notice what's changed about your breath, your attention, the physical changes. And then come on upright. Send the legs long in front of you. And again, you may want to kind of move the muscles of the glutes around so those sits bones connect firmly to the mat. Allow the feet to be floppy and relaxed. And then take the hands beside your thighs to start with and just start to walk yourself down, folding at the hips, walking the hands as far comfortable, far as far forward as comfortable, and finding kind of that maximum fold that feels good in your body. Now you may want to add a bolster here long on your legs to support the torso. You can have a bolster and then a block to support your head, or you can simply let yourself stay here and relax through the head and relax through the shoulders, kind of letting the shoulders round and the head hang heavy. Last opportunity to kind of open up through that back of the neck. So take your time to find the place that's sustainable. We'll be here for about two minutes or so. And then once you find your landing place, deep breath in, deep breath out. As we continue this stretching and lengthening, you find sensation here, not only in the hamstrings, but also through the low back and then all the way into that base of the spine. Still that stretching and lengthening through the vertebra in the neck. And depending on how heavy your head is hanging down, you may have compression in the front of that neck, or you may not have very much. If it feels okay, you can gently turn your head from side to side if you've got a support there. You can let your cheek rest on the block or the bolster and then eventually turn to the other cheek and rest on the block or the bolster. Not required. Got about one more minute here. 
maybe with that minute you inhale and lengthen a little bit more and as you exhale you soften and fold forward a little bit more but more important than the folding forward is just finding maybe a little bit more length in the spine and a little bit more space through that back of the neck Breathe in. And then breathe out. For the last, let's say, 10 breaths of this particular shape, I will offer one more affirmation for you. And this affirmation is, I am balanced in speaking and listening. I am balanced in speaking and listening. Last two breaths, breathe in. Breathe out. Final breath. Open mouth, soft, easy exhale. When you're ready, very slowly and very easily start to make your way all the way back up, walking the hands up towards the body and stacking one vertebra on top of the other. Get rid of your props, get them out of your lap if you brought something into your lap. From here, we're gonna make our way down onto our backs. So bring the soles of the feet together, grab the back of the hamstrings, and just start to lower yourself down one vertebra at a time until you come all the way down onto your back. Take a couple moments to windshield wiper the knees from side to side. And then on your next pass, allow the knees to stay at the right and take your gaze to the left, arms come out to a T or cactus shape at the side. We won't spend a whole lot of time in this twist, just an opportunity to kind of massage those internal organs and get that last little bit of kind of stimulation in the neck as we turn it from side to side in this twist. Take just a couple breaths here. And then slowly bring the gaze to center first and then bring the knees to center. And then allow the knees to travel to the left and the gaze to the right, just balancing out this twist. Gaze comes back to center, knees come back to center. And then I'd like for you to set up for whatever shape you want to take for Shavasana. I'm going to have you set up in your Shavasana shape. We're going to take one last breath work, one last pranayama kind of round, and then I will let you drift off into your final Shavasana. So any shape for Shavasana is great. You might be flat on your back for this final rest. You may put a bolster underneath your knees, maybe a block under the head. If you're starting to get chilly, add a blanket to the body. Yep, and I see some of you are moving to the wall, so yeah, have at it. Take, make your way to the wall if you'd like to throw those legs up the wall, if that would feel good.
All right, we're going to have some oceanic breath or ujjayi breath here. And the reason for that is that in this kind of supine position, this ujjayi breath feels really different than it does in a seated position. And so you'll feel it kind of in the back of your body, in the back of the neck. You'll feel it in the throat. So just kind of give yourself the opportunity to experience this particular breath in this particular shape. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this, it's just simply breathing in and out through your nose. So exhale completely. Bring the lips together to touch. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. And just keep breathing just like that. What you might find is that you get this sound. You might get this oceanic sound or some people call it a Darth Vader sound, right? As you breathe in and as you breathe out. And you can focus a little bit on the sound, but focus on the sensations that you're feeling in the body. Feeling in the throat, the back of the throat, the front of the throat. Maybe you feel that little vibration all the way up to the scalp. Maybe you feel it all the way down to the toes. Let's do three more weight breaths like this. Inhale. Through the nose, exhale. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last one. Exhale through the nose. Breathe in one more time. Fill up belly, ribs, chest. Open mouth. Exhale. Let it go. And with that, let yourself surrender completely. Relaxing into this time just for yourself, this time of Shavasana where you can rest, restore, recalibrate, prepare yourself for the week ahead.
begin to bring awareness back. Begin aware, with awareness of your skin, the air wafting across the skin, maybe the clothing touching the skin, or where your body is connecting with its props or the mat. Come in a little further to the flesh and then to the bones. And then bring your attention to that center core, the energy that runs through the body, and let that attention remain here in the throat, that throat chakra. Breathing into that space and breathing out of that space. The last affirmation I leave you with as you make your way off the mat today, I create speech that reflects my loving thoughts. I create speech that reflects my loving thoughts. Allowing those loving thoughts to fuel you as you begin to find some small movement here, wiggling fingers and wiggling toes, circling wrists or circling ankles. Eventually allowing the movements to gain in size and gain in dimension as your body wakes up. Maybe a full body stretch or some movement of the head from side to side. When you're ready to transition, making your way all the way on to one side or the other and resting there for several breaths as you begin to bring your awareness back completely as you begin to reflect on the remainder of your Sunday. And then slowly and easily coming up to a seated position on your mat, sitting tall, Allowing the eyes to close, bringing the palms of the hands together and bringing them right to that throat space. Breathing into this space and breathing out. As always, I wish you a week ahead filled with beauty and love and most importantly, filled with that ability to speak your truth, to communicate fully and completely. As always, thank you for being here. Namaste.